Hey guys, welcome to your next stop. Another wonderful guest is here to share their passion with you and how they turned that into a business. I can not wait to you guys dive really deep into this story. So welcome, Leah Murphy. How are you? I am good, Juliet. Thank you so much for having me on the episode. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited too. And I know I heard a little bit about your story. Um, my, my listeners will laugh because I've met a handful of people on Clubhouse, but then I've also met people elsewhere. A lot of times guests will then recommend someone else. Um, but we met on Clubhouse, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We met on Clubhouse in one of the podcasting rooms. Yes. And I think I was host. Was I hosting that room? Was you were. It, you were facilitating that room that day. I was right. And you came up and I was like, Oh, I love her voice. And I love what she's doing. So I asked, right. I think I was like, I think I need to have you on my podcast because I your story again, my listeners know I love to hear a little bit about someone's story. But then I kind of like to like learn about it as I'm as you know, it's kind of unfolding. Welcome to your next stop. This is Juliet Hahn. I am a wife, mom, virtual coach, public speaker, and crazy obsessed dog lover. I am so honored to be able to take you into the life of someone that has followed a passion. Every week, I hope you are as inspired as I am. Welcome to your next stop. So if you could dive into your story. How did you follow your passion and turn it into a business? You know, if you need to go back to, if you went to university, uh, you know, or if you have to go back all the way to when you were a kid, um, I would love my listeners to get a little insight into you. Okay. So we, I won't go to my therapist couch, right? I'll take it. <laughs> I won't go that far, but I will definitely give you a little bit of background um, about me. So I am uh, originally from Philadelphia, born and raised in Philadelphia. Oh my God. Um, and I have to I have to pause you. So I grew up right outside of Philadelphia in New Jersey, and my mom and my brother still live in Philly. So oh, super cool! Super I did cool. not. What part of New Jersey? So it's a, it's a little town called Morristown, like right near Haddonfield, Cherry Hill. Yeah, I know exactly where that is. Yeah. Um. So awesome. Look, we're connected on on East Coast vibes. So, um, <laughs> I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. I went to Temple University for college. Love Temple. Love the Owls. Had a fun, wonderful experience there. And then I left um university and went right into corporate America. Dove in really traditional path. My background is mechanical engineering. That's what I studied in school. So I took on all kinds of technical, complicated roles, which were fun. I learned a ton. I moved all over the US doing that. And as I reflect, like I had very limited fear at that stage, right? It was kind of like I wanted to get my life started. I believed that all of these great things were so exciting and there was so much ahead of me. And um, I went, I dove in head first. My university experience, though, really helped to shape me because I studied engineering, as I mentioned, and I was one of very few women of color in that program, right? So there was a lot of shaping that happened there to navigate these environments that are predominantly male, predominantly white, and I'm a Black woman. So figuring out how to be in these spaces and maintain my own authenticity while at the same time navigating them successfully was a skill that I started to sharpen in university, which definitely helped me when I got into corporate America because it was just more of the same, right? Like I just left university and then I moved to the Midwest, which made it even more of the same. Right. Um, so I, I'm going to pause you for just one second. Cause one thing that you said that I absolutely love, which I think is really important for my listeners to hear is that you were, you went in with this, but no fear, right. But also you stayed authentic to who you were, even though the, your environment, you could have you could have morphed into something else, right? You were standing out, you were a minority in a, in a world. Um, and so I love that you, you said that you were like, I stayed true to who I was, but as you did that, you started sharpening tools. And I think a lot of people sometimes will morph themselves into, you know, into try to fit into that, into that group that they are trying to, you know, that they're different than, and they don't sharpen tools. They don't become who they actually are meant to become. And it just takes them a little longer. So I totally applaud you on that. I think that is, that's amazing. So, so, so true. I tried to morph and I failed. Right. And that's the thing, because we're all meant to be who we are. Right. We're all meant to be this individual that, you know, changes the world because we're present. Right. Or impacts the world because we're present. So I just decided, like, I'm just going to be the self-proclaimed weirdo. I'm just going to accept it. <laughs> right. And I'm going to live into it. Right. The more I lived <laughs> into being a weirdo and not fitting into these environments, I started to attract the right kind of people. When right. I was working so hard to mask it and to, you know, to transform or code switch, I was kind of getting doors closed in my face. And that was discouraging. 
the moment that I really started to lean into like, yep, I wear my hair wild and crazy. Yep. I like to, you know, drink chai tea as long as I just, you know, <laughs> went with it. Then my tribe started to appear and I felt seen, I felt heard, I felt acknowledged. And that community really started to show up for me, which gave me the confidence to then, you know, move and do bigger and better things to take on brand new challenges. So for your listeners, there's always this time where you're, there's a choice to be made. Do I try to conform? Do I try to fit in? And a lot of times we all do, right? To be honest, um, because we all want to be accepted. We all want to be celebrated, not tolerated. So sometimes um, the environment is the challenge and not us as individuals, but it takes a little bit of time to recognize that and see it. So I feel fortunate that I recognize that uh, in undergrad so I could carry that with me when I left school. Right. And I love what you just said, celebrated, that, that quote. Can you say that again? People desire to feel celebrated, not tolerated. As love human that. beings, we want to be in environments where it's like, hey, I'm happy to see you. How are you? Right? <laughs> Things are going great. Sit down, pull up a chair rather than like, oh, you're here. Right. No, right. So, nobody's looking for that. So true. So true. Amazing. Okay. So sorry to take you off on that, but I just loved everything you said there. And I just think it's so important and so, like something that needed to be really focused on because that is so much what people do is they really try to mask who they are. So I love that. So, okay. So then you graduated the university, you went into the corporate world. Yep. I did corporate world, did it really well. If I may say so myself, had a great time, worked for fortune 500 companies, you know, took on new roles, got promoted, all of the fun stuff. Right. And then I decided that I wanted to um, change my life, right? I had a priority where I had an amazing um, career coaching experience and I was a young, you know, emerging executive. And one of my sponsors saw something in me that I didn't see it myself at the time. And he basically said, I want to give you this coach because we're going to prepare you to be at the next level. And I was like, okay, right? Like not really knowing how to go into it. And it absolutely transformed my perspective because having a career coach directly focused on my needs and my priorities and how I could strategize to grow my career, slightly agnostic of all of the other priorities that were the organization was putting on me at the time. She's really helped me to focus and narrow in on what are you looking to learn? How are you looking to grow? Where do you want to be in five years, right? The things that you're doing now will either set a foundation for you to be able to catapult from, or they will be an anchor for you because you are tied to doing this one very specific narrow thing. So that really blew my mind. And it caused me to create a strategy where I progressively moved away from technical roles in engineering and moved into roles that were more business facing and more strategic, which like mind blown, right? It's a whole new world right. um, considering I spent 10 years doing the previous. So then as I'm talking to her and we're having these great conversations, I'm doing a lot of introspective work. I'm understanding my own needs and values and how I can show up in the world that, you know, inner weirdo, right? Pops back up. It's like, okay, cool. So now you can start to use your voice in these other environments to speak for these communities that, you know, otherwise would not have a voice. So I started doing more leadership work there, started doing more public speaking. And then I decided like, all right, this is an itch. Like this is an itch that I have to get scratched. And my career coach, I asked her like flat out, like, what do you think? I'm thinking that I want to take another path and I want to maybe do career coaching. This has been such a great experience. And she said to me and looked me straight in my eye and said, I think you can do whatever you want. Like, I think what you have, what you've, the work you've done thus far, like I could see you on, you know, on big stages, I could see you doing great things. And it was just that moment of her confidence in me that she had um, seen enough, right, in the world. She had enough experience and, you know, she was a, a wise woman who was, you know, a little bit more senior than me and had accomplished so much in her own life. So the fact that she could see me as a peer and drawing a parallel to the work that she did really built my confidence. So yes. I did the work, I got a certification um, to become a career coach and I started a podcast so that I could give away career coaching, right? So like similar to the work that you're doing, it's this idea that there's so many of these pockets in our world that people are just not fully informed on. And it's not because of choice, it's just, it has been introduced to them. Before I had my own career coaching experience, I didn't know what it was. I didn't even know it existed. And neither did my peers. And that was the part that kind of blew my mind. I'm talking to my friends who are, you know, other young professionals. I'm talking to my peers at work, other young professionals, and they hadn't had a coaching experience. It was this sponsor that thought, that realized it had the budget, saw me as an asset and decided to make that investment. So what I realized was people who don't have means or don't have that sponsorship would completely be left out of that conversation. And that just didn't sit well with me, right? I thought that there was an opportunity to kind of bridge that gap. So I started my business, 
career gems for the journey and the podcast that goes along with it. And the podcast is really to create access to people all over the world in different socioeconomic impacts, but really to give people some of the gems so they can see like there's more here. If we're willing to do the work, if I can find the right guide, if I can find the right coach to support me, imagine what I can do, right? If I'm doing great now, imagine the exponential growth I could have with someone who's strategically invested in seeing me grow. And that's how I started Career Gems for the Journey. I love it. And so what it, can you just tell us what your podcast is as well? Is it? Is it yeah. So my podcast um, is Career Gems for the Journey. It's the same as my company name. We publish episodes um, every two weeks and it's really focused on the ins and outs of navigating corporate America, um, understanding the culture, how to elevate in your career. It's real honest success stories and failures from myself and my co-hosts that really give you the context for like, oh, I can see this coming on the horizon. Let me navigate around it. So if you don't have support within your organization, Career Gems for the Journey is kind of like the little angel on your shoulder, like, hey, if you do this, right, if you tap into these resources here, then you can have the same opportunity to grow. And, you know, if we're honest with you, because we're that's all we plan to do on our podcast is share very authentic stories of success and lessons, right? Because we don't lose, we learn. Success and lessons from two women who have had really robust careers in uh, Fortune 500 companies. And now we're giving you the gems from our career journey so that you can apply them to your journey. I love that. And you know, I mean, that's one of the things that I fell in love with podcasting is because you can get your message, your voice, your story, right? Your story out there more. And that's what I am just obsessed with. So I love that you're doing that. You're, you're telling authentic stories and authentic stories are what help people because they can relate. And when, so true. and when something's relatable, they could be like, Oh, wait a second. Let me stop for a second. I've always had this idea or I always thought I wanted to do this, but I've never met anyone relatable. Like their story didn't resonate with me. And when you're hearing a story that resonates with you, it opens your mind a little bit. It makes you start thinking. It definitely does. And that's why representation in all forms is so important, right? It's we're all kind of, like I said earlier, looking for this community where you'll be celebrated. And if you find someone who who is similar to you, whether it's um, socioeconomic, whether it's race, whether it's gender, whether it's class, whatever it is, you find someone who's like, oh man, you're maybe five or six steps ahead of me. That shows me it's possible. That shows me that there's a way. And for me to be a career coach, really came from the idea of 15 years in corporate America and doing it really successfully and wanting to make sure that other people got that same access. And then the podcast became a vehicle to be able to do that to many, many, many more people than I would be able to touch one-on-one, -on -one, right? There's only 24 yeah. hours in the day, right? <laughs> I still have a very full life. I'm a hybrid. I do maintain a full-time job. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. So, you know, doing the podcast and being able to share that content for people to be able to self-serve, right? And figure out when they, what they want and when they want it really helped me to feel great about not only offering something that was a tremendous value to people, but also giving people a repository that they can go back and check in the future, right? If they're having a new challenge, let me see if there's something there that I can dig into. Right. Totally. That's so true. I would love to like touch on a little bit. When you started all this, were you um, already a mother? Was it before you were married? If you can give us a little insight, because I know there's someone sitting there going, oh, well, I'm this, so I can't do it. Or, oh, I'm that, so I can't. So I would love for you to give us a little insight in that. Where were you, you when were you started this? You're so right. You're so right that somebody's thinking, oh man, she was able to do all that, but I have these limitations, right? Yes. And I like to talk a lot about mindset. I like to talk a lot about having a growth mindset and really, really harnessing the power of yet, right? Even if we haven't done something, we haven't done it yet yes. because the right opportunity hasn't presented itself. It's not that we can't do it ever, right? It's that my way is going to be different. My weird way, Leah Murphy's weird way is going to be different from Juliet's weird way, right? And that's awesome. Yeah. So I will absolutely tell you, I've been married to my husband for 12 years. We just celebrated 12 years of marriage. And I like to joke and say, he marrying him was the best decision that I ever made. It's a joke and, and as well as serious because yes. he has been my number one fan. He's my biggest supporter. Um, and because he is my number one fan, he allows me to be every version of myself, which requires, you know, him to kind of <laughs> like stand back and say like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing today. Cool. So, <laughs> so because reminds me of my, my world too. My, my there world. you oh, go. Okay, right? And he's yeah. definitely uh, a great asset to have as a partner. And we have three small children. We have a nine-year-old daughter and we have identical twin boys that are five years old. So a very full life, right? As I mentioned, yes. 
all of my work to starting the career coaching really started um, right when my daughter was born about eight years ago, when I started doing it really actively. And the way that it happened was super organic because I was so fired up about my experience and I wanted to get out there and help other people. So I started just, you know, doing it, um, actively doing it, right? Kind of practicing my craft um, and really learning my skill, honing in on it. And then people would have great experiences. So then they would send their friend to me. Hey, Leah, you know, you talked to me about this. I had a great experience. Can you talk to this person? So I was doing it and doing it. And then it started to get to like, okay, I need a system, guys. Like right now I'm trying to like, you know, put calendar invites and just take scribble down notes on a notepad. So I had to really systematize it, which is why I went ahead and got my coaching certification. And then I actually, you know, formally started the business. Um, and then my boys were born. I took a little bit of time off when my twins were born because, you know, twin life <laughs> is a whole different kind of thing. As a mother of multiples, I'm sure other multi mothers of multiples would be able to appreciate it. But it's also something that I that fed me, right? Because it's tied to my passion, it's tied to my purpose on earth. It filled my cup. So when I was able to help people build careers that they were proud of, that they were going to thrive in, it really fed my passion, which made it not feel like work, which yes. is like, I mean, people used to say that like, oh, you know, when you do something you love, the money will come and you it won't feel like work. And I was always like, I have no idea what you're talking about, right? <laughs> like, uh, maybe in heaven, that's where it happens. <laughs> right. But maybe it's not going to happen for me on earth. And then I started to get to work with people directly and their wins, their results, their success stories really would put me on cloud nine, right? It was like a personal high to see the work that I was doing have such impact on people's lives. So um, I've done all of this while having children, while being married, while relocating. But what I do really try to encourage people to do is, Think about the balance that you're trying to create in your life. What's the desire that you have for your life? Because my goal is to remain happily married. Number one priority, right? Yes. To remain happily married. If any of my endeavors, any of my motivations um, compromise that or put that in a challenge, it, it's it's a no, right? It's a right. hard no for me. Um, but what I do do is I'm constantly in a place of how can I optimize so that I can continue to build this strength and be the parent and wife that I want to be. I want to still be able to walk my children to school. I want to still be able to do homework with my daughter, you know, at the side of the table while she tells me about student council elections. Those things are important to me. Yes. So, you know, because I'm trying to create that balance and it's on, it's a constant everyday <laughs> trial. So if you're having a hard time today, if you, if you didn't, if you forgot to put the banana in the lunchbox, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. We'll have another choice. So I give myself a lot of grace and I try to just offer it to other people, my clients, especially. We are all working every day on our own journey and we will get to our destination, but we have to give ourselves and others grace in the meantime. So there's so things true. that I totally outsource that I just don't believe in focusing on because I'd love to spend my time and energy focusing on being a great wife, a mother, an entrepreneur. So, you know, if laundry doesn't get done, I'm happy to outsource that. No problem. Right. Well, so you know, that's yeah, the balance for me. And I love that. And I think there's there's two things I want to touch on. I've actually, yesterday, I just I recorded an episode that went out today. And she, the woman, Jordan, was talking about she had three businesses. And she said, you know, as you know, one business she sold and it became work. It became, and she was like, everyone always said, when you find something that you love, it doesn't feel like work. And she's like, I'm working for myself. I'm following a passion, but it still feels like work. And it, you know, it, it, then she found like what she's doing now. She's like, it doesn't feel like work. I understand that. So that's the first thing. It's so true. And this comes up time and time again on this podcast because it is really true. The other thing is I had, um, a guest Sujata talk about you can have it all, but just not at all at once. And mm -hmm. that's so important because she's a mother as well. And, um, you know, there's a, when you were growing up, I was growing up, there was a kind of a time when we, I think, I don't, I think we're probably, you're a little bit younger than me, but there was a time where it was like, okay, women can have it all. And it, you know, it was a good thing, but then there was a little detrimental to that. I remember when I had my first child, I always wanted to be a mom. I wanted to stay home. I was a baby, you know, I babysat when I was 11 years old. I did that all through college. I loved little children. I loved babies and I could not wait to be a mom. And there was a time where I was, and I, my listeners know the story, but I was sitting on my deck and I was talking to a nanny 
and I was talking about going back to work and um, I got off the phone and I was like, really like, oh my gosh. And my sister had her son the same, like a week apart. I was in alternative advertising. I traveled all over. We lived in New York city. I traveled all over. It was like crazy hours. She was in corporate real estate. She lived in Charlotte. She lives in Charlotte and she was able to go to the office one day a week. Now I knew I was going to like, even though my boss was like, we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. You can come in a couple of days, but like if, you know, there's going to be traveling and blah, blah, blah. And I just remember being like, I don't want to do that, but I feel like I have to do that. And I was always, I'm a very confident person and I never really succumbed to that. But at that moment, I did feel the pressure of society and I felt like just to be a mom wasn't like enough. So I remember talking to my husband and he's like, whatever you want to do, I'm here to support. I have a similar, my, my husband is my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. And um, my sister said to me, cause I was like, I don't know what to do. And she said, well, what's going to make you the best mom and wife? And I said, I didn't even pause. I was like to stay home. And she goes, well, you just answered it. And I remember the weight being lifted off my shoulders. And now my mom, who was a single mom said, I mean, my dad was involved. My mom was a single mom. There was five of us. And my mom always would say, stick, keep your job, keep your job. You don't, you know, and I knew that was coming from her just out of protection. Right. Um, but I also knew that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to stay home. And so she was like, okay, but can you do me one favor? Cause my husband did, you know, does well and stuff. She said, please just get a babysitter one day a week. So you can just still have your time. I'm just, I know you guys can afford it. So it's okay. I just want you to have that. So you don't completely lose yourself. And now I know what she was talking about before I did it. So I was like, yes, I called the nanny I said, listen, I'm, I'm not going to go back to the, you know, to the office. I called my, my office and they were totally fine with it. Um, but she said, I'll come one day a week. That's totally fine. I was like, okay, it could be in a whole day thing. Even if you know I'm still there, maybe you can help with laundry or help with cooking or do other things, right? That because that is what you said is so important. And there's people out there who be like, oh, I can't outsource. They're different than me. I can't outsource. But I will say, when I started my podcast, even though my husband has a great job, he wasn't working at the time, and I was like, I'm going to start this podcast, but I'm going to fund it. I'm going to pay for it. And what did I do? I looked at my finances. I saw where I could save things. I actually started babysitting a dog that was down the street because they needed someone. And it was able, I was able to use that little bit of funds to do the editing because I didn't want to edit. I was like, Oh, I don't want to edit myself. That's like not going to, that's not going to serve me. Right. I don't, I know how to do it and I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to have someone else do it, but I was able to figure it out. Right. I was able to figure it out. And still to this day, I pay for all of that in the back end. Either my, my husband could pay for it and would pay for it. I'm like, Nope, this is my thing. I'm going to figure it out. So I want our listeners to, you know, the hit listeners to hear right now, that is something that can happen. You can figure it out. You can look at your expenses. Do you need to go to Starbucks and get that coffee every day? You know, do you need to go get the fast food? Do you need, there's things that people can make adjustments. Not everyone. And I understand that, but there are people that can. So I love that you touched on that, that you will outsource because you want to be the best wife and the best mom. And you want to be also do what is fulfilling you. And so that is what's so important. So I love that you touched on that. Yeah. I think everybody needs to have something that fills their cup, as I mentioned earlier. So for my children, right, for their parents are filling their cup with love and attention and games and play and all of those things, right? So they're taken care of. For my husband, my husband is all about travel. He always wants to be some, you know, somewhere new and enjoying something new. So that fills his cup. So we do that together. We do that as the two of us and we do that as a family. So then thinking about what filled my cup, I should make that choice and make it in a way, in a way that's healthy for me because that's how I'm the best version for them. But I also really believe in multiple income streams. So like, I love the idea of like, how do you budget down so that you can invest those resources somewhere else yes. to potentially see that grow? So, you know, I also, manage a real estate portfolio with my husband and we have partners for that because that for me is important to have another passive income stream. You know, I mentioned that I'm a hybrid, so I still do maintain a day job and that works for me in this season. It may not work forever, right? I also have the podcast. I was in my coaching business. So all of those things require some time and attention, but it also fills my cup in a way that's important to me. And I think your mom's point was actually one that's so amazing and kind of, you know, I certainly would look past too. It's like, you know, don't lose yourself. It's easy to lose yourself in everything. It's easy to lose yourself in work. 
in your marriage, in your children, it's easy to forget, like, who is the person that I am? Like, what are the things that really make me happy? What brings me joy? Yes. So I love to just encourage people to check in with yourself, right? Are you doing something that is kind of lighting your fire, right? Keeping you motivated, especially in this global pandemic. <sighs> that we're all just, you know, trudging through, hoping that the other side looks better than where we are today. These are really important self-care opportunities to take really good care of ourselves, our mental health and our well-being, so that we are not, you know, brought down by all of the dumpster fire that is the world sometimes today, right? And <laughs> based on reality, yes. and watching the news. So I really try to encourage folks to figure out what your needs are. Self-care is really important. It's not selfish. It's really an asset, right? To who yes. you are and how to make you better. So all of those versions of me, you know, live in one human being and I try to do the best to show up and I accept that I'm going to make mistakes, right? right. I'm going to fail some days. I'm going to fail forward. You know, earlier today, my son's had two different socks on, like his socks didn't match and he wasn't bothered. So then I wasn't bothered. I was like, normally I would like run like, oh, let me find the exact part. Perfect. <laughs> He was happy. He put his sneakers on. He skipped off to school like life was great, right? But it's the things that we tell ourselves, you know, sometimes yeah. are problems. Let those things move past us, right? Because yes. when we're our cup is filled, then I'm an excellent coach, right? I'm an exceptional resource to my clients when I am taking good care of myself. I can hear the difference in my delivery. My creativity is higher. My ability to collaborate, to be innovative, to help to break open for them where their mindset or limiting beliefs may be happening, I can feel it happening when I'm doing the right thing for myself. So I so see true. how it manifests in my own life. It's so true. And I love, I mean, this is exactly what this podcast is about because that is when we are in as humans, as I'm going to, because we're both women as women. Um, I mean, men are same, but when we're in a flow and doors just keep opening, you know, okay, I am doing the right thing. And when we do that, we're showing up the best for our spouse, our kids, our friends, you know, whoever it is. And it's so important. And a lot of people, you know, don't go and explore things because of fear. They're afraid, right? They're afraid of, afraid of failure. And I always say, when you fail, I don't even call it failure. I call it a misstep. It is, you're learning. You're learning about yourself and you have to take that fear. I mean, so many times when I'm doing the podcast room, so many times when I'm talking to clients, that's like the number one thing why people don't go and and follow their passion or something that they're excited about because they're afraid of failing. And, you know, as kids are younger, I always think like it's so much better when kids are young and they fail, even though it's hard for parents to see. But the more a kid kind of has to like learn stuff, the better they're going to be as adults. Right. I mean, because it's like they, sure. they've learned it. And uh, the missing match sock thing, by the way, I wear mismatched socks literally every day. And um, <laughs> my kids always did too. And now that my teenagers, they're, they, every once in a while, my middle guy, I'm like, your socks are mismatched. He's like, oh, I don't care. And I'm like, oh, I love that because I do it every day. I literally never wear a, a matching pair of socks. Um, and it's true. You, you said something about fear there, and I really love it because um, I'm, I'm also learning that other people's fears impact our ability to move. There's our own fear that we have to combat with. And then the people who love us, right? The people who care the most about us also want to protect us. But sometimes that's their fear that they are using in order to put a lid on our dreams or our needs. So I love the idea of like identifying what am I, you know, what am I most afraid of? Right. And then feeling the fear and then doing it anyway. Right? Yes. Because fear is a healthy calibrator. We need it, right? Fear is, you know, is a carnal internal nav navigation system that's saying, you know, this could be dangerous, you know, alert, alert. It might be dangerous, right? So <laughs> then maybe the opportunity is to get more information, right? Do more resource research, build more resources in, create a coalition of people to help me, right? The idea is I hope for most people who are listening to this podcast and are really looking to experience the fullness of life, it's feel the fear and then do it anyway. Yes. Um, the fear doesn't go away. I'll be honest, right? Coming on this podcast today, I'm prepping. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like this is the first time I've been on somebody else's podcast in <laughs> 2021, right? I do my own all the time. And now I'm thinking about somebody else's and I've been doing my podcast for years, but still this moment was like, no, there was a little nervousness, right? There was trepidation. And that's, that's my story, right? That's me being honest, but do it anyway, yes. right? Because there, you never know what's on the other side. Growth 
is on the other side of your comfort zone. And I really believe you don't lose, you learn, you don't fail, you gain a new opportunity to reinvent yourself, right? To, to evolve. So I just wanted to spend a little bit more time there. No, I love that. And you know, it's funny because I'll do, you know, when I have guests on the podcast and you were not one of them, but I will have guests that will say, can you send me a list of questions? And I'm like, no. And they're like, what are you talking about? Uh, are you going to give me any, like any guidelines? And I know it's usually people that are a little bit more type A and I'm like, yeah. it's your story. I was like, do, do you need me to help you with your story? Cause I can't, it's your story. You're just going to be talking to me. And they're like, okay. And I, I could hear. And then once usually we're over, they're like, oh my gosh, you're right. You just talked to me. And I'm like, I am very comfortable. I come up with questions that a lot of people don't ask because I'm a curious person. But again, you know, when someone's coming on at first, they don't know that, right? They don't know. And I literally, I'm like, okay, you're going to be a guest. I'll send you the link the day before. And people that are type A or a little bit more, if you know the Enneagram or a little bit more Enneagram one, they're like, um, I just need a little direction. I'm like, it's your story. I can't give you direction. We're just going to talk. And they're like, oh my God. So it's interesting. I think it's so amazing because podcasts, the best podcasts to me are the ones that feel like two or more people who are having a conversation that I'm getting to like, listen in on. Yes. It's like, oh, you know what I mean? It's organic, right? It's authentic. You know, there are, I just knocked over my mic because I talk with my hands, right? <laughs> so, but it feels like something that I'm just kind of getting an insight of the fly on the wall in a great conversation because that chemistry is organic and natural. Yes. So I totally agree with you to model the podcast so that people feel like they're getting to be a part of something that they would have already wanted to show up for. And it doesn't feel like, you know, there are lectures and there are other environments where people are going to get that, you know, really structured Right, A, B, C, right, carry it all the way through, whether it's church or whether it's university. But right. I like podcasts to feel like conversations. No, I agree. And you know, it's like literally when you started talking, I was like, oh, this is going to be great because I could just feel our energies. Maybe it's our, you know, our South, our Jersey, Philly kind of connection. But whatever it was, I was like, oh, this is going to be so good because we are just going to flow in our conversation. Be, and I'm going to have so many questions because I'm so curious. And I love so much what you're saying, Leah. And you are definitely onto something. I love everything that you're creating and you know, you're just going to keep going up and up. So can you tell everyone where they can find you? Um, if you have anything that you want to share with the listeners, you know, please do so. And, um, just keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I appreciate that encouragement. And I love that there's an opportunity for us to feel like we are in similar spaces, but we both have something to offer, right? And our listeners will benefit from listening to Juliet as well as listening to Leah. So I love that. And I just wanted to put that on the table, right? We uh, Collaboration over competition is the way that I like to Oh, totally. That. Yeah, totally. So um, Career Gems for the Journey is the podcast. We're available on all listening platforms. So wherever you get your podcast content, you can find us there. And we really love to explore, right, this new normal that we're navigating. Um, so our conversations right now are really focused on how do we build a career within the pandemic? How do you, you know, get noticed? How do you leverage the opportunity that the market is creating now that, you know, we may never see again, where people are leaving roles, people are coming into places. So lots of great conversations there. Head on over to Career Gems for the Journey. You can also find me on my website. Um, it's gemsforthejourney.org. On my website, I give lots of blog posts. I also give tools for people to then go and use, right? These are all free tools and resources on our career tools pages to help people get a sense of what happens, you know, the back behind the scenes of career coaching and getting some, you know, some resources there. I do free 20 minute um, coaching sessions, just more as a consultation. What are you trying to do? How are you trying to grow? Maybe I can help you or maybe I can direct you towards other resources. So you can book those on my website on gemsforthejourney.org. And I am an aspiring writer. So I'm in the process of writing a book because there's so, right, there's just so much um, content, right, that's kind of out there and would love to put it, uh, put pen to paper as a legacy, you know, tool that I can look back on um, years from now, right, that the story got told that the weirdo story got told from a firsthand perspective, firsthand point of view. Um, I also host rooms on Clubhouse twice a week on Sunday and Tuesday at 7 p.m. on negotiation. Um, a lot of your career is about negotiation and learning how to talk about the numbers so that you can maximize your investment in yourself. That time that you're spending with your employer should be a mutually beneficial arrangement. So negotiation in every phase of your career, whether you're staying or whether you're going, is a critical asset. And I have some tips on that on my website too and an ebook. So you can find me awesome. on gemsforthejourney.org. I hang out on LinkedIn and Instagram 
Instagram or the social media platforms, Career Gems for the Journey on both of those. Would love for you guys to drop in and give us some feedback. Give me a comment there. And thank you so much, Juliet. This has been great. This is a great way to start my day. I know. I was. I always skip off, right? And this is another one I'm going to skip off. And I'm, I'm going to actually have to pick up my two kids for an orthodontist. And I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I just met this woman. It was wonderful. And I and they always laugh because they're like, I could always tell my mom has like a really good because I I'm just it, I like literally skip away being like this is what life is about. This is what life is about. It's about connecting with like-minded people and listening about what they're doing because it just fills, this is what fills my cup. So yes, I Can love I that. Can I just say one thing about that? Of and course. I, I know we're going to close out. No, please. I really feel so fortunate. It is truly a privilege, right? It is a privilege for us to do what we do and for us to be able to tell other stories and bring, build a platform that allows us to expose our listeners to these other stories that may have otherwise not been told. I feel extremely fortunate to be able to do it. I feel fortunate to have been here today. I don't believe anything happens by happenstance. Me too. I believe that this is ordained and the universe has brought us together for a purpose. Yes. And I'm thrilled to see what's on the other side. So Me thank too. You. Me too. And when that book comes out, you know, we'll do it again and I'll, I'll have have you on my live show and we can, you know, give out some samples of the book and we can do all these great things. So we'll definitely Love stay that. in touch and guys, everything will be in the show notes. So if you're driving, which I always don't, cause I always am driving when I'm listening to podcasts, do not stop and try to write it down stay safe. And we will have this in the show notes. You guys can, you know, you know where to find me. So if you like what you heard, you guys know what to do. Rate, review. Also go over to Leah's uh, Gems for the Journey and give her a rating and a listen. And I cannot wait for you guys to be back here. You know, we're doing this twice a week. You guys can come back for YNS Lives that are happening on Thursday and on Monday, your next stop. And I can't wait for you guys to just be inspired every day and do something good. So thank you again, Leah. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Juliet. Take care, all. Bye. I hope you liked this episode of Your Next Stop. Please subscribe to my channel, share with your friends, and join in each week.